And that's when idea of Sun Mobility came up to, um, to start looking at kind of the questions we've been talking about, right? Range anxiety, cost, refueling time. So I said, if you could actually solve these problems, um, there's going to be a huge opportunity. And the second part was, where is the opportunity? Is it going to be at the OEM level? I felt that the business system of the future going to be in energy, right? Can you democratize energy in a way that's quite different? Mm -hmm. And then where do you focus on that front? Right? And two and three wheelers were 80% almost of India. So can you give one solution for all of that? So, right. And the second was bus and trucks, which is 2% of India, but 50% of the emissions and energy. So in a way, it was departure from personal cars to saying where's the biggest impact in society, where's the largest business and energy. And in those businesses, um, as an energy player, the economics made sense. So if you gave a customer something that was 20% cheaper to buy and 20% and cheaper to operate, right, then there's a fundamental shift in them adopting. And then there's a fundamental shift in sustainability, right? Eventually, it's dry, it came from that. and So Sun Mobility was started trying to look at the fact that we can make cost, we can make it cheaper. Mm -hmm. That was the hypothesis. I spent a year going around the world, which is a great time to take a time off, and understood why swapping worked and why it didn't work, right? And, and trying to see the tech that needed to it. Um, I spent three months understanding what to do in Bangalore for the buses for BMTC and try to see what solutions would work and did fast charging, did slow charging, did swapping and realized that the economics and swapping would work much better. So, and to rickshaws in Delhi. So it was a real insight and then the tech was very critical. So spent a year, filed my first patents and then started the company with uh, my partner with AK Inka, um, who's a very passionate on climate change. So what brought us together was that he was into renewables, uh, I'm into mobility. Sun Mobility is where I started racing solar cars. It's also his family side of it. So everything came together with the name and what we want to do is how do we run the world with this. So Sun Mobility started with that ethos of really addressing these, these aspects. There. Can you tell us a bit more about that? What are you guys doing at Sun Mobility? So what we do is that um, um, we've taken two parts. Let's start with the micro mobility. Mm -hmm. and, uh, if you sell a vehicle sans the battery without the battery, the cost of the vehicle can be cheaper than internal combustion engine vehicle, right? Mm -hmm. So we heard that the cost of batteries are 30%. In some form factors, it could be 50%. In buses and trucks, it could be even 60%, mm -hmm. right? So depending on where you are, between 30 to 60%. So it would be the cost of the battery. So if you know the battery, battery management system, even the charging system, then the cost of any IC vehicle, any electric vehicle can be cheaper than an ICE vehicle, mm -hmm. any form factor today. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the amortized cost of energy, a battery, and the cost of energy is cheaper than fuel. Mm -hmm. And then if you think of, I can swap it in a minute, mm -hmm. then you've addressed both the range anxiety and the refueling time. So the concept is to create battery as a service, right? But then create it across a common solution across all platforms. So we took two wheelers use one battery, smaller rickshaws use two, larger loaders use three, and something like a Tata Ace would use four batteries. So anything from a scooter to up to two tons, which is 80% of India, could use one battery and one infrastructure solutioning, right? And, and work across this format. So that was the idea around it, micromobility. And then we have solutions for trucks and buses that go from five tons to 55 tons. And we use modular batteries um, that can allow you to have one or two batteries to get you different range formats, mm -hmm. right? Again, you can today have a truck or a bus that's cheaper than a regular electric truck or bus cheaper, and you can address range anxiety. So if you think of in a city, you're doing your routes, right? Uh, in a city like Bangalore, 92% um, of your routes are under 40 kilometers, right? But you do average 200 kilometers a day. Mm -hmm. So actually, why do you carry a three ton battery when you can carry a 600 kilogram battery? So it's 2.5 tons lighter, right? And which means your energy efficiency is 10 to 15% better. And you can use a much smaller battery and the battery is the most expensive thing. So you cut down the cost of the battery and, and do a third or so, and you cut down the cost of the station, 
because of the high utilization. And so the economics work out much better. Hmm? These are also very long life batteries. So in uh, scooters and trucks, we uh, scooters, they last probably around uh, 3000 plus cycles. So you're making the battery or? Yes. So and we, also what is battery swapping when my battery is out of charge? Do they come to your yes. service point? No, so today we have, uh, we have around 600 touch points. Mm -hmm. uh, in Delhi, we have a little over 400. We have a station at every two kilometers, right? We, by the next couple of months, we'll have more touch points than all petrol stations put together. So it's really accessible within two kilometers. You can go to any network, right? Um, IOCL is our partner. So we are at Indian oil petrol stations here and there, so it's easy to access. But they're at metro stations, they're independent sites, they're at franchisee partners. So can uh, we, someone like Blue Smart use this tech? Uh, yes, they can, but that's for cars. We haven't done it. I think in cars, uh, for, for services like what they're using of shared mobility and taxis, swapping makes a lot of sense. And it? Uh, definitely good. But there's a, there's, you know, we've today started the business mm -hmm. in the two and three wheelers around shared mobility. Because mm -hmm. these people are driving a lot, so it makes a lot of sense because our earnings are higher. Mm -hmm. Personal mobility, people drive less, so the models have to change slightly, but there's no technology issue. For example, if you look at a country like Taiwan, in 92% of all electric two-wheelers are with swappable solutions, right? Just by one company, but it gives a solution to multiple companies. So the solution is working at scale. Um, this year, 50% of all electric trucks in China were with swappable batteries, right? That target was supposed to be achieved in 27. So you're seeing now at scale, this happening from small form factors mm -hmm. to large form factors. So. You, you have two models, you have battery as a service and mobility as a service. Battery as a service, we've partnered with over 15 OEMs. Mm -hmm. So you can walk into an OEM showroom, say in this case, you wanna buy a three wheeler, you walk into say a Piaggio showroom, mm -hmm. you buy the vehicle, mm -hmm. right, without the battery, and like you buy your smartphone without your SIM card, mm -hmm. right? And then you sign up for our, on our platform. Mm -hmm. The dealer himself sets you up. Um, you have an RFID card, you have a wallet, you go to any station, mm -hmm. you can then just swap your batteries mm -hmm. and you only charge for the energy you use. So you use half the battery, you get charged only for half the energy that you use. We have both pay-as-you-go models and subscription models, right? And these are these work out cheaper than even CNG as a fuel, mm -hmm. right? And the cost of the three-wheeler today when you walk into a showroom is cheaper than a CNG vehicle. Mm -hmm. So, and we do this without subsidies, right? Sustainable- are there subsidies for this? If you buy it and as a mobility as service, we'll come to. But as battery as service- I saw in that 10,000 crore subsidy, 1,000 is for charging. Yeah, so there's so there's, there's supposed to be this, mm -hmm. right? But again, policy lacunas come one, and this is one another big mm -hmm. policy gap the government has, right, mm -hmm. on this front. The second is mobility as service, where we found a lot of fleets want to go electric. And they don't want to deal with the infra, they just want to go. And when they cross 50 vehicles, they found it very challenging to run their fleets. So we give them the vehicle, the energy, data, and the whole service associated with it uh, for on a cost per month basis, right? So today we maybe have, only on mobility as service, we have a little over 15,000 vehicles um, with fleet providers who in turn are using them to deliver to Amazons and Flipkarts and everyone else, right? We also have infrastructure at Amazon sites. And who's the biggest client in terms of? Um, they would be partners for Amazon, so they'd be like a Zip or Zingo and a bunch of other, all these. Uh, so we are on 55 fleet customers today. They may have fleets from 50 to maybe 3,000 vehicles on our, of our vehicles on their platform, right? Um, and they can go to market very quickly, right? We, we in some, time, some months, can put 1,500 vehicles on a fleet in a month, which is very difficult for them to go on, right? And now their routes change. They have no issue on range anxiety, right? Swapping anytime they want. And, and it's all inclusive, right? So that's both battery as service and mobility as service business here. And then, um, you know, in trucks and buses on that front. Hi, I'm Nikhil Kamath. I'd love to know what you thought of the episode. Uh, comment, like, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.